Hey everyone, and welcome to the third episode in my Launchpad tutorial series. Last time we had a look at how tracks work in Ableton, how data flows, and we learned about how to use instruments. This time we're going to expand on all of that, and I'm going to show you how to use the session view, the arrangement view, the mixer view on your Launchpad, and we're going to look into some MIDI mapping. First, I'm going to go over the arrangement view. There's a little button here in the top right that switches between the session mode and the arrangement. It's not like a toggle whether you want to use one or the other, it's basically just a thing that switches your view. In arrangement mode, each row is one track. So this is one track, this is another track. The actual horizontal part, uh, it, it represents time. So if I go ahead and make a selection here, then right click here at the top, then I can uh, hit insert MIDI clip. And if we double click this, then we get into the MIDI clip editor. This will be really important later on, but for now I'll just cover the basics. Um, basically what you can do with this, uh, you can draw notes into it, and then when you play the arrangement mode back with these buttons, uh, it's going to send these notes over to your track. So let's go ahead and quickly add that grand piano thing again. I'm going to arm it so I can use it. I can go ahead and draw notes in here. So first enable draw mode up here. You can just press B on your keyboard. That's a nice shortcut. And now you can draw notes. So let's say I draw C3. I just click on it. And then you can like stretch this note out and do stuff with it. Uh, you can zoom time over here. You can also do this in the arrangement view itself. That's how you zoom. And here you can also zoom on the keys uh, to make them as large or as little as you want. Um, so now let's play this back. So basically you can use this to tell a MIDI track to do whatever you want it to do. And this will play even if the track is not armed. So if you're not sending it input, this will play no matter what. Uh, we can do the same with audio tracks. Let's find a kick. There we go. And we can just directly put it onto an audio track. We can also do it with a snare, and we can put it on here. This is how you make songs in Ableton. You arrange the audio and the MIDI, and then you can play it back whenever you want. So that's your basic stuff around arrangement here. Now you can duplicate this stuff. Uh, you can move it around. You can uh, copy it around like this. Like so, you can do the same with MIDI clips. Just select something and copy it. All right, that's like really all you need to know about the arrangement view for now. Just basic stuff. We're going to use it a lot later. So now let's look at what we can do with the session mode. So the session mode is actually uh, not too different. The only difference is that you decide when you want to play a certain clip instead of the uh, time deciding for itself. Let's go ahead and move this clip over. So if I hold this clip and then I press tab to switch to view, I can uh, copy it into the session view and I can play it. And it plays with the arrangement because the arrangement is like always playing. And because this track is now controlled from the session view, uh, it's disabled in arrangement. So I'm just gonna delete these audio tracks uh, and then we're gonna be fine to experiment around in session mode. So now I can play this. This clip is like very long, but basically once it reaches the end here, it'll re-trigger. That's the whole point of the session view. So you have like clips that you can play. Uh, what's uh, very important about the session view is that you do not have to do it visually in Ableton. You can just do it on the launch pad. So now you have like a view here. These red buttons, they're the free clip slots. So these clip slots here, they're free. And we can record our own MIDI into them by pressing a record button and then going to user mode. Now we can now we can record our key presses and stop at some point, go back, then we can play it. Basically, now you can play this bass as well. You can just use the same clip. Let's mute this track. Or you can play something else like this clip from before. And now we can have a look at what's going on in the launchpad. So clips that are actively playing are pulsing green, and clips that are not are just in their own color. So you can change their color if you don't like this color. Let's say this color, or we can do a red one, yellow one. You can put any color you like. Now you can trigger them from here. If you want to stop a clip, you click on an empty clip on the launchpad. That stops all clips in the track. There can be only one clip playing at a time in the track. So if I start playing this, and then decide to play this instead, then this one will play instead. It's not gonna like play them both at the same time. Only one can be playing on the track at a certain time. And now you can record this into the arrangement view. So, and now if I start recording here and start some clips, they're being recorded here. Trigger this clip.
Okay, now I should go over the Launchpad's mixer mode. So there's a button here that says Mixer. Uh, if we go ahead and look at it, it has uh, these columns. Each of these columns is a track. So if we look at the session mode, they match what's drawn on the Launchpad. So these first ones, this is the volume. You can read them here. They're, they're specified over here. So if I click here, then I can change the volume of the track. So this here parameter changes. It also changes in the Launchpad when I drag it. So you can use this to change the volume live. So let's say I trigger this clip. So you can adjust the volume of the track on the fly. We can do the same with this one. Uh, you can also change the pan. So now I hear the bass on the right and the piano is playing on the left. This is kind of weird. You're never going to really use this though. These are the sense for these two return tracks and I'm not going to go over them because you don't really need to use them ever, no matter what. If your volume is somewhere, it's not zero basically. You can press this button and it brings it back to zero. The same for padding here, if I put it to an unstandard value and then press these buttons, it brings it back to normal. These buttons here stop all MIDI clips that are active, so if I enable this one, then I can stop it here. These here are the mute buttons, so these correspond to these. I've already clicked them a couple times. Basically, this allows you to mute a track really quickly. Let's start playing this. And now I can use this to mute. This button here is a solo, so if you only want to hear this track, you can press this. And this means it'll disable output from all other tracks. And the one on the bottom, this is the arm. This basically selects which track you want to give input to. That's the basics of working in mixer mode. Let's go back into the arrangement real quick. So now we have this recorded and I can play it back. But let's say I want this piano to change a parameter while it's being played so it can sound different. All right, let's say I wanted its attack to change while I'm playing it. So let's say I wanted to go for an effect like this. Like this is obviously not a very good example, but let's say I wanted to do that. So how can I achieve this automatically? Basically what you can do, you can map any parameter to what's called an automation. That's this here red line that you can see. So when I select some parameter, it's displayed here in this automation selector. I can also select manually from here, or I can right click the element and then tell it to show me the automation directly. So now I can like draw points here. So the bottom value is zero. I can draw a different point now. And now I'll drag this point up somewhere. Now it's 127. And now while the time is playing, it's gonna change this parameter automatically like this. So now we can change this to have the reverse effect like that. Sometimes you want it to start going up slow and then finish quickly. Basically what you would want is instead of the straight line, you want a curve, but what you can do, you can hold Alt and then it lets you make a curve. Now let's have a look at how we can map this parameter onto our launchpad. Maybe we wanted to change it live during the performance. We're gonna use user two mode for this right now, but you can also use user one and we're gonna use it in user one later for page swapping. User two is basically just user one. It sends notes, but it's different because it's uh, arranged differently. So the left side goes from low to high, but so does the right side and it goes smoothly across the middle. You can go ahead and map uh, some parameter onto one of these buttons, usually a row. So what you can do, you can click here. Uh, this enables uh, MIDI mapping. So now when I play a note, nothing happens because it's waiting for me to select a parameter. So this is basically the mode where you decide to map stuff to buttons. So let's say I want to map it to this here, this here parameter. So now I'm gonna press the button that I want this map to. So let's say this button. There you go, and now I can exit this mode. When I press this button, you can see it toggles from being full to being disabled. And I can play around with that. But that's very limited to what it can do. So instead, what we do, we select a range of buttons, and we can do that by holding the first button, that's the start of our range, and then pressing the second button, that's the end of our range. And here we can look at all of the MIDI maps we've made. So let's say I wanted to map this one as well to a different row. I just map it to a different row. And now I can have a look at what, what exactly is mapped. So I can I can provide a minimum and maximum value for the mapping. So now if, if I go left to right, it does this properly. The effect is a lot more noticeable if I instead just put zero to 127. 
that's kind of how it works. Um, but you you don't really want to use this for like smooth automations like this. Usually you want to map something to range of buttons so you can increment it. Uh, we can also record ourselves changing these parameters and this gets saved as an automation. So if you press record here, now there is nothing playing in session mode, but it's still recording the track we armed. So now let's say we wanted to go to user. Now we can like directly record the notes we press into the arrangement mode. We do not have to necessarily record them into session mode. And this is what you're going to use for recording your performances. So now in user 2, if we change this parameter, it gets recorded as an automation. Depending on which one we change, the view changes. We can solve this by just pushing them into a new lane. So we can... Now we have a lane for each of them. That's gonna be all for this episode. If you have any issues with this, please leave a comment, uh, ask your questions. I will answer them immediately and also in a future video. In the next episode, we're gonna move from the very basics and we're gonna look at how to actually make samples and arrange them on the launchpad. Thank you for watching and see you next time.